Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, thank you for being here in person or joining us online. I want to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Algonquin peoples. Let me start with a question. Two questions, actually. Why has culture always mattered to Canadians? Why should it matter now? These answers to these questions are fundamentally about who we are and who we want to be. We are a small, diverse population spread over a large land mass. We are all bound by reconciliation. Indigenous people lived on this land for thousands of years before the arrival of settlers and the founding of Canada. We are a country rooted in our linguistic duality. English and French are at the heart of who we are. We celebrate the fact that 8 million Francophones have a vibrant culture, all the while being surrounded by millions of English language speakers. We are a democracy. We believe in and promote gender and racial equality and human rights. We promote these values to the world. We are a cultural diverse country that welcomes immigrants. We are a country that looks like the world. All of these strengths make our culture and our identity dynamic. They make us unique. And we've spent the last 80 years developing cultural policies that preserve these strengths. A good part of this work has been done in the shadow of the largest English language content producer in the world, the United States. Canada has long understood the need to promote Canadian culture, to build identity, pride, and a shared sense of values. From the very first national cultural institution founded in our country, the government's goal was to create a space for Canadian voices. This goal was top of mind when Parliament adopted Canada's first radio broadcasting act in 1932 and launched CBC Radio-Canada four years later. We knew, then, we knew then, as we do now, that Canadians need access to a system of broadcasting from Canadian sources. D'autres institutions fédérales ont suivi. L'Office national du film, Téléfilm, le Conseil des arts du Canada, le CRTC, la Loi sur les langues officielles, la Loi sur le multiculturalisme, la Loi sur les musées. Nos politiques ont évolué en même temps que les identités et les valeurs canadiennes. Pensons aux langues officielles qui ont été érigées en loi. Pensons, à notre, à, pensons au pluralisme et pensons à notre volonté de répondre aux appels à l'action de la Commission Vérité et Réconciliation. Today, we found ourselves in another shift. We listen to radio, to TV, go to the movies. We visit museums, read books and magazines. And more and more, we have the opportunity to do all of this online. When it comes to content, Canadians want choice. But we know that access and affordability of internet and wireless are real issues for many. Broadband coverage is uneven across the country, and we pay some of the highest rates in the world for internet services. Our government won't increase the cost of these services to Canadians by imposing a new tax. We've lowered tax for the middle class, and we will continue to do just that. However, we will make sure that our creative industries succeed and make content that we love by using all of the tools we have. Demandez à quelqu'un d'entre nous de nommer une œuvre canadienne qui l'a marqué. Je parie qu'il vous parlera d'un livre, d'une émission, d'une chanson qu'il aimait lorsqu'il était enfant. Passe partout. Mr. Dress Up, Takuginai, The Log Driver's Waltz, Anne of Green Gables, ou encore, comme j'aimais quand j'étais petite, Anne, La Maison Pignon Vert. Voilà pourquoi il est important pour nos enfants de voir et d'entendre des histoires qui témoignent de qui nous sommes au moment même où ils grandissent. Et c'est aussi vrai aujourd'hui qu'en 1932, lorsque la Chambre des communes a adopté la première loi sur la radiodiffusion.
the arts and culture sector provides jobs for more than 630,000 people. It's a $54.6 billion industry. And there are thousands more working in new fields, like the 20,000 Canadians designing and composing for video games. These are the jobs of tomorrow. And not just in big cities. Norton, Ontario has hosted 28 full-length productions in 2016. Shows such as CTV's Cardinal, Hallmark Flower Shop Mysteries, or Creative TV, Crave TV Letter Kenny employed 1,530 people. Our, indries, und, our industries are doing well, but actually not just well, they're doing great. Two Sundays ago, Montreal writer Louise Penny took over the number one spot on the New York Times bestseller list of, for her book, Glass Houses. At the same time, young Canadian poet Ruby Cower was 13. Remarkably, it was her 34th consecutive week on the bestseller list. That same night, Margaret Atwood, Lorne Michaels, and director Jean-Marc Vallée were fed, each fedded at the Amy's. And a few days earlier, it was announced that Donald Sutherland, her own Donald Sutherland, would be receiving an honorary Oscar. These are incredible, internationally recognized accomplishments. Still, I know that there's anxiety at home. Certaines industries créatives sont nées dans le numérique et d'autres ont adopté le virage. Elles créent de nouveaux emplois et pénètrent de nouveaux marchés. Nous en sommes fiers car elles sont des chefs de file dans le domaine de l'animation, des jeux vidéo ou encore de la post-production. Par contre, Pour d'autres industries créatives, la transition est plus difficile. Pensons à la radiodiffusion et aux médias d'information. Aujourd'hui, Facebook, Netflix, Spotify et YouTube offrent directement du, du contenu aux Canadiens en marge du système réglementé que l'on connaît. Ce contenu est majoritairement produit en anglais à l'extérieur du Canada, ce qui a des répercussions différentes sur notre marché francophone et sur notre marché anglophone. Toutes ces perturbations sont également vécues différemment selon qu'on habite dans une région urbaine ou en région rurale, là où la qualité d'Internet varie. Et nous devons tenir compte de ces réalités. Nous devons agir en conséquence. If we're complacent, this new wave of information can drown down our own, co our own content, our French language television and film, indigenous music or multicultural programming. This worries me. It worries our creators. And it worries Canadians. Because we care about Canadian content. We are fiercely proud of our stories and our talent. And we will continue to champion the internet as a progressive force and an open space without barriers. As a government, we stand by the principle of net neutrality. But at the same time, we're fierce advocates of cultural diversity. We are champions for our creative industries. We must find a new way, a Canadian way, to support our content creators, ensure they can compete, and to create a space for them in markets and platforms at home and around the world. Today, I'm announcing our government's vision for a creative Canada. Aujourd'hui, j'annonce la vision de notre gouvernement pour un Canada créatif. Creative Canada sets a policy direction for our program, legislation, and portfolio agencies for the coming years. And it includes new initiatives and new funding to get us there. In our vision, Canada is a world leader in the quality of its creative industries, with creators empowered to make great content that stands out at home and around the world. And that Canada is a pioneer in ensuring that there's a space online for a diversity of voices at home and abroad, including Canadian content in French and English, multicultural and indigenous expression. This is our vision. It is ambitious. It should be. Canada Creative repose sur trois piliers. 
investir dans nos créateurs et leurs récits, promouvoir la découvrabilité et la distribution du contenu canadien à l'échelle nationale et internationale, et troisièmement, renforcer la radiodiffusion publique et soutenir les nouvelles locales. I'll talk about each of them. First, investing in our creators. <clears throat> the talent and imagination of our creators is at the heart of our approach. From the first days of our government, we've made an historic investment, $1.9 billion in new funds in arts and culture. But there is more to do. Our new approach will help creators develop new ideas, take risks, and make content that stands out. Je reconnais qu'il y a beaucoup d'anxiété liée à la pérennité du financement des productions indépendantes. Auteurs, producteurs et réalisateurs s'inquiètent de la situation. Ils s'inquiètent d'autant plus que les revenus d'abonnement sont en baisse parmi la, les câbleaux distributeurs privés. Or, ces revenus alimentent directement le Fonds des médias du Canada. Nous voulons démontrer notre appui au secteur. Aujourd'hui, j'annonce que dès 2018, le gouvernement va accroître sa contribution pour maintenir le niveau de financement du Fonds des médias du Canada et pour pouvoir régler cette question. Today, I'm announcing that starting in 2018, the government will increase the federal contribution to maintain the level of funding in the Canada Media Fund and counter these declines. L'an dernier, le Fonds des médias représentait plus de 28 000 emplois dans le secteur pour des émissions comme 19.2, Kim's Convenience, Orphan Black, Unité 9 et Mohawk Girls. Avec ce nouvel investissement, nous appuyons directement les emplois de nos auteurs, nos producteurs, nos réalisateurs, nos acteurs et nos équipes techniques. So, whether your job depends on building a set, catering for a crew, or standing in front of the cameras, we want to make sure you know we believe in the strength of our production sector and its importance to our communities. This increase in funding will allow us to see what the next few years bring in the industry and to work together to develop a model that will be viable over the long term. Great productions rely on great stories and the talent and time needed to develop them. Creators and producers across the country told me that we need to do more to support great stories at the roots. I heard how hard it is to get scene money to get a script or even a pitch off the ground. That's why we'll also work with the CMF to explore how to enhance early stage development such as script writing. En musique, Nous aiderons les artistes et les entrepreneurs de la scène musicale à développer les compétences qu'il faut pour promouvoir leur musique ici et à l'international. Dans le domaine littéraire, nous soutiendrons la production de livres imprimés et numériques en encourageant les approches novatrices de commercialisation des publications canadiennes. Et nous allons éliminer les longs délais, mais surtout la paperasse. Nous nous attaquerons à l'administration des crédits d'impôt traités par le BCPAC et nous travaillerons avec Téléfilm afin d'explorer l'instauration d'un guichet unique. In all our programs, we'll continue to make sure that they support work that reflects Canada in all its diversity, including Indigenous-led production, work in both of our official languages, and work that represents a multicultural fabric. And we'll work with our portfolio organizations and other partners to achieve greater gender parity in our creative industries. We need that. In the tech sector, entrepreneurs benefit from a startup culture to nurture new ideas. They have incubators where they can grow their businesses. We need the same networks to grow our creative industries. 
spaces where creative entrepreneurs can access tools, training, equipment, and mentorship. This year, we announced $300 million in new funding to the Canada Cultural Spaces Fund. Today, we're setting aside part of this investment for new creative hubs to incubate the next generation of creative startups. Places like 312 Main in Vancouver's downtown east side, La Sat in Montreal, or C-Space King Edward in Calgary. Our strongest startups also need capital to innovate and scale up. That's why creative industries can now access our government's $1.26 billion strategic innovation fund. We want more Canadian creative entrepreneurs to be inspired by international successes such as Cirque du Soleil, DHX Media, and Robert Lepage, and to have the support to get there. Investir dans nos créateurs, c'est aussi veiller à ce qu'ils soient rémunérés de façon équitable. Pour ce faire, ils doivent pouvoir protéger leur propriété intellectuelle et en tirer le meilleur parti. Nous allons bientôt procéder à un examen parlementaire de la loi sur le droit d'auteur. Et je vais travailler d'arrache-pied pour m'assurer que cet examen défende les intérêts des créateurs. De même, nous allons procéder à une réforme de la Commission du droit d'auteur pour nous assurer d'investir dans le contenu culturel, de payer plus rapidement nos artistes et de réduire les coûts pour toutes les parties. Together, these initiatives will support creators as they turn great ideas into great content. Our message to them will be clear. Take risks, put forward bold and unique material, and we will help you succeed. Once we've got great content, our next challenge is to make sure it finds its audience in Canada and around the world. There are three main parts of, to the challenge of distribution. How to make sure that we have our own domestic market? How do we deal with foreign services that come into our domestic market? And how do we make sure our domestic market reaches the international market? Let's start with the question of the domestic market. The way we access content today is increasingly open, mobile, and individual. Let me be clear. A strong domestic market is vital. It's a launchpad for homegrown talent and a precondition for global success. It remains a core responsibility of all the players in the system to support our domestic market, and that will not change but our laws and regulations need to work in an online environment. That's why, after nearly 30 years, it's time to review the Broadcasting Act. We will announce more details of the review of the Broadcasting Act and the Telecommunications Act later this fall. Together, these two acts will continue to form the backbone of our communications system. Il ne fait aucun doute que le CRTC est au cœur de cette transition. C'est pourquoi, aujourd'hui, le ministre Baines et moi-même avons envoyé une lettre à Ian Scott, le nouveau président du CRTC, pour lui expliquer les enjeux que nous croyons importants dans l'accomplissement de son mandat. C'est également pourquoi, aujourd'hui, nous exerçons notre autorité en vertu de la loi et nous demandons au CRTC de présenter au gouvernement un rapport sur la manière dont il conçoit l'évolution du système pour soutenir le contenu canadien. Nous lui demandons de se pencher sur de nouveaux modèles qui appuieront la création et la distribution d'émissions d'information et, et de divertissement canadiennes, et ce, dans les deux langues officielles. Nous attendrons impatiemment le rapport du CRTC au cours des prochains mois, car il éclairera notre travail législatif qui est si important. On the second question of foreign platforms in our markets, what is their role? What obligations do they have to Canadians? Our goal is clear. As a government, 
we have a core responsibility to continue to protect and promote our stories and our culture. We want to make sure these platforms work for Canadians and understand the importance of being a strong partner to support Canadian content. As many of these platforms become producers themselves, it becomes even more important to ensure that there is a diversity of voices, Canadian voices, on their streaming platforms. J'ai déjà commencé à rencontrer les grandes plateformes pour créer des liens et les inviter à la table de discussion. Nous voulons qu'elles contribuent à l'atteinte de nos objectifs, appuyer la création et la découvrabilité de contenu canadien. I'm pushing for commitments that benefit our industries. Today, I'm announcing the first of these agreements on behalf of the Government of Canada and Netflix. Under this agreement, Netflix will create Netflix Canada, a permanent film and television production presence here in Canada, the first time that the company has done so outside the United States. And building on the strong track record of investing in shows like Anne and Elia's Greats with the CBC, Travelers with Showcase, and Frontier with Discovery, they have agreed to invest a minimum of $500 million in original productions in Canada in both official languages over the next five years. Le marché francophone possède une industrie avec un grand potentiel de croissance. Et le Québec est reconnu pour l'excellence de sa télévision et de son cinéma. C'est pourquoi Netflix s'engage aussi à investir 25 millions de dollars de plus dans une stratégie de développement de marché pour le contenu et la production francophone, y compris celle au Québec et dans les communautés francophones du Canada. Netflix veillera également à la découvrabilité des films et des émissions canadiennes en les mettant en évidence et en les faisant connaître sur sa plateforme aux Canadiens, mais également à des millions de personnes à travers le monde. Nous sommes le premier et le seul pays au monde à avoir conclu un tel accord avec Netflix. Et nous l'avons fait dans l'intérêt de notre secteur. These partnerships will allow our creators and producers to make top shelf, high quality content that competes with the best in the world. That is what is possible, this is what we expect, and this is the type of commitment we will work to achieve with other platforms as well. So that our creators and industries remain strong, valued, and ultimately Canadian. Maintenant, la troisième question. Comment s'assurer que notre contenu accède à d'autres marchés? Les entrepreneurs créatifs doivent plus que jamais se tourner vers les marchés mondiaux pour demeurer concurrentiels, générer des revenus et créer des emplois. Nous avons travaillé en ce sens dès notre arrivée au pouvoir. 35 millions sur deux ans ont été prévus dès le premier budget pour établir notre présence sur la scène culturelle internationale. L'une des premières choses que nous avons faites à être présent sur le terrain. Nous avons maintenant de nouveaux diplomates qui aideront nos industries créatives à se faire connaître à l'étranger. Ces experts locaux les aideront à percer des marchés clés pour leur croissance. Nous avons aussi investi pour que le Canada participe aux grandes foires commerciales internationales et à d'autres événements importants. Parce que c'est là où on tisse des liens, parce que c'est aussi là où on conclut des marchés. Cet été, le Canada a été le partenaire officiel de Gamescom à Cologne, en Allemagne. En 2020, le Canada sera à l'honneur à la Foire du livre de Francfort. Et les retombées seront importantes tant pour l'industrie du livre que pour d'autres secteurs créatifs. This work must continue, and this work must continue and grow. How will we do this? We will launch the first federal cultural trade mission in Canada's history. We'll support taking our best creators and companies to major foreign markets to make deals and build business-to-business -business relationships. 
we will expand and modernize our international co-production treaties to grow production budgets and attract new financing partners. And we will establish a Creative Industries Council co-chaired with the Minister of Innovation, Science and Development. To grow the sector, the different industries need to talk to one another. This group of experts drawn from across the creative industries will work on concrete strategies to open up new markets and coordinate Canada's international presence and Canada's brand. To support this work, as part of our Creative Canada vision today, we are announcing a new investment of $125 million over five years to support Canada's first creative export strategy. And we will work to enrich this investment as we continue to open up new markets and opportunities for Canada's creative entrepreneurs. We've been leading an international conversation on how can we ensure that a free and open internet supports the diversity of voices and national content. I've said we believe the internet is a progressive force, but all players, government, internet companies, and civil society have a role to play to get this meaning. In, it means that in a world of algorithms, there is a value, a public interest, in bursting filter bubbles that exist. It's why we want to see diverse Canadian content easily discoverable on all platforms available in Canada. We've been working at UNESCO, the G7, the World Economic Forum, and even in Silicon Valley itself to raise the importance of this issue. And we will work with our Canadian experts, including Waterloo Center for International Governance Innovation, and with the Digital Global Policy Incubator at Stanford University, to organize an international forum to engage governments, civil society, and global internet companies in discussion on these issues. Le droit des États de protéger et de promouvoir leur industrie nationale doit être préservé. Il en va de la diversité des expressions culturelles sur la scène mondiale. Et je veux, être une claire sur une, je veux être claire sur une chose. La culture est une priorité dans le cadre de nos négociations de l'ALENA. Et c'est pourquoi notre gouvernement est déterminé à maintenir l'exception culturelle visant les industries créatives dans le cadre de cet accord. There is no place to be more concerned about filter bubbles and the vital need for local information that in the new sector. During our consultations and through the hard work of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Heritage, I heard firsthand the importance of local news and information. In some communities, public broadcasting on radio or over the air TV is essential is an essential source of local coverage. For others, it's their local newspapers, which could be online, like All Nova Scotia, a source for local, for local and business news in the Atlantic region. Mais il n'y a pas de solution facile pour faire face aux difficultés de ce secteur. La responsabilité de trouver des réponses à ces enjeux est l'affaire de tous, les gouvernements, le secteur privé et la société civile. Notre approche sera guidée par les deux principes suivants. Premièrement, une démocratie saine dépend d'un contenu journalistique fiable. Deuxièmement, les mesures prises par le gouvernement doivent respecter l'indépendance des médias. Our approach will not to be to bail out industry models that are no longer viable. Rather, we will focus our efforts on supporting innovation, experimentation, and transition to digital. There's no one-size-fits-all approach. We have to foster experimentation and continue to take into account regional and linguistic differences. A few minutes ago, I talked about our expectations of platforms that create and share cultural content. We expect them to contribute to our goals. We expect internet companies that aggregate and share news to do the same. 
we've asked Facebook to do more. Today, I'm pleased to announce that they will partner with Ryerson's Digital Media Zone and the Ryerson School of Journalism to create a first digital news incubator, which of course is it's the first of its kind in Canada. The goal of this incubator is to accelerate ideas that contribute to the digital development of journalism. This is a welcome first step. Our intention is to foster many more. In our own court, in our own court, we have the Canada Periodical Fund. It began more than 150 years ago, and of course, as Canadian Heritage Minister, I love that number, 150. So that means that was before Confederation. It was a post postal subsidy to make sure Canadians could ac have access to news at an affordable price. Today, the fund supports diverse Canadian magazines and community newspapers, but it is still built around the concept of print subscribers. As more publications go mobile or online, what is really important is that they continue to publish original Canadian content and that we provide the support they need to innovate, adapt, and transition in the ways that best serve their communities. In this environment, the need for a strong national public broadcaster has never been more clear. CBC Radio-Canada broadcast its first newscast, a bilingual radio report, in 1936. For nearly 81 years, it has been a source of news stretching to the furthest communities. In many parts of the country, it is an essential source of information, sometimes the only source. Never before has a public broadcaster been so needed, so vital to so many to tell the stories that must be heard on television and radio through the documentaries, films, and children programming, to report on news that must be covered, to convene the conversation that must happen in a space built on public stress, public trust, and public interest. Notre radio diffuseur public a une responsabilité fondamentale. Les attentes des Canadiens sont élevées et elles doivent l'être. Les nouveaux fonds investis dans Radio-Canada s'élèvent à 675 millions de dollars. Cet investissement appuie la production de contenu local, la transition vers le numérique et le recrutement de la prochaine génération de talents créatifs. Nous avons aussi lancé un processus ouvert et indépendant pour sélectionner la prochaine direction de Radio-Canada, une direction à l'image de notre diversité et de nos talents. Il s'agit d'une étape importante pour Radio-Canada une occasion de réfléchir à l'avenir d'une mission déterminante, offrir une expérience et des contenus uniques sur une plateforme 100 canadienne. Dans cet esprit, pendant l'examen de la loi sur la radiodiffusion, nous entendons consolider le mandat de notre radiodiffuseur public. Nous voulons que Radio-Canada soit un partenaire de premier plan parmi les organismes culturels et d'information, qu'elle joue un rôle rôle de chef de file pour mettre en valeur le contenu canadien en français et en anglais, qu'elle reflète la diversité de notre pays et ses peuples autochtones au Canada et à travers le monde. During the past 12 months, I've heard from thousands of Canadians, including many of you in the room. We all know that this is a very complex subject. No one is able to say with certainty what is the new business model for creation, production, and distribution of Canadian content in a digital world? This is a challenge and an opportunity. It generates anxiety and optimism. It is with humility and a deep sense of responsibility that I present to you today our government's vision for a creative Canada. While we deal with transition, we will build our new system. The vision and the strength of our creative industries is our foundation and our roadmap. Ce matin, nous avons publié le cadre stratégique d'un Canada créatif. Je vous invite à le lire attentivement. 
Bien sûr, le travail n'est pas terminé. Au contraire, durant l'année qui vient, je continuerai à travailler avec vous et avec l'ensemble du gouvernement pour maintenir notre impulsion et donner vie à cette orientation. If we get this right, we will be a leader in the world, and this will be our legacy. Generations from now, we want Canadians to have touch points that bring them together, that are markers of shared experience of who we are. That is what culture does. And that's why now and in the future, culture matters more than ever. Let's build this future together. Bâtissons ensemble un Canada créatif. Let's build a creative Canada. Merci beaucoup.